Pasta pasta means enough pasta in Italian, but you know, I can never get enough. I just love pasta, and one could argue it's the best candidate for a weeknight meal because it's so quick and easy. But who makes the best pasta? Today we'll travel all the way to Tuscany to answer that question. We'll join local chef Alessio Bagnoli for a lesson in homemade pasta made with a secret, oh so local, ingredient. We drink wine, we cook with wine, and we make also pasta with wine. Why so. not? Why not? Why so, not? Why, whoa! <laughs> and if bad puns have no international boundaries, that shouldn't stop you from making this delicious tortelli stuffed with local asparagus and goat cheese. This is the best tortelli I've ever tasted. <laughs> to you, 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 you. Okay, that was pretty hard to beat. Back home in my kitchen, I've got a homemade ravioli that's done in 40 minutes thanks to a time-saving secret ingredient. Quick homemade cheating American ravioli versus wine-soaked Italian tortelli. Which is better? It's a U.S. Italy pasta smackdown. Today on Sarah's Weeknight Meals. I've got some girlfriends coming over to eat today, and I'm going to make them one of my favorite recipes for my new cookbook. It is bitter greens ravioli with cheese, and it's vegetarian. I don't know why. I'm just cooking so much vegetarian these days. I just love vegetables. Isn't it nice? And hey, you know, it's healthy. So I'm starting with my bitter greens, and I've got quite an assortment here. I need nine cups chopped. So uh, let me just show you. This is a wonderful thing to have in your kitchen. It's an eight cup measuring cup. And yes, it's for liquid, and I'm putting solid in there, but this isn't rocket science. So the fact that I've got, you know, eight cups of, or nine cups of greens in a liquid measure doesn't matter. But let me get them cooking, and then I'll tell you what I'm cooking. And uh, we're going to use the liquid from the greens to make the sauce. Okay, let me get some oil into the pan. So we need about three tablespoons. Extra virgin olive oil, this is Mediterranean. So, what I have here is mustard green. These are very peppery, I love them. This is rainbow chard, which isn't all that strong. You take out the rib. I just love this. This is watercress, but you see how tender it is? I'm not even gonna bother chopping that. Oh, and arugula, it's just, uh, it's intense. Okay, I think that's good. I'm gonna get these guys in here. We're just gonna wilt them down. Ah, yes. That's the sound you wanna hear. Add a little more. Takes no time at all. So I'm gonna season as I go. And some pepper. This is almost done. See how quickly it goes down? I'm gonna squeeze it, because we don't wanna put a wet filling in our ravioli. The wet filling would make the ravioli get soggy and break. We're gonna let this drain till it's cool enough for me to really squeeze it. And I've got this cool tip to show you about how to get all that liquid out. So, as I said, this is Italian. We're gonna be putting into the filling some ricotta cheese, homemade if you wanna make it. Uh, it's really fun and pretty easy. And then we're gonna also add some pecorino romano. So, uh, we need about three tablespoons, and I'm gonna use my microplane here. So there's that. And okay, um, let me see how we're doing with this. Yeah, I think I could start squeezing this. So this here, you probably know it as a potato ricer. It's like a giant garlic press. And uh, it's just the best way to get liquid out of greens. Oops. And then just watch this. Brilliant, right? Isn't that amazing? Greens are, they're all water. Whoop. When you think about it, most of the tools in your kitchen have so many more uses than you even know. Now, why am I saving this liquid, you ask? 
because it's got tons of flavor in it. And since this is a vegetarian recipe, I could use vegetable stock, but why should I use vegetable stock when I've got this fantastic tasting liquid from the vegetables that I just cooked? Do you believe that was nine cups of greens? It's just so amazing. Okay, so this is what I was looking for. I have my greens, I have my juice, and I'm gonna get my cheese. I need a quarter cup plus two tablespoons of ricotta, homemade or store-bought, full fat or low fat is fine. And then my three tablespoons of pecorino. Let me just bring this here. I'm gonna just bring this over and add it right from here. Oh, you know I did way too much. I can't help myself. I'm a cheeseaholic. Boy, I don't know what I would do if I found out I was lactose intolerant. Okay, so now nutmeg. Now nutmeg is a classic. Let me just wipe off my hands. With spinach, but it goes very nicely with other greens as well. But a little goes a long way. And it really just grates so nicely. So I'm gonna stir this up and give it a taste and see if I've got something I like and then I can start stuffing. And this, this cheese is cool it down enough, so I think we'll, we'll be fine. Get a fork. Now you could make the filling ahead of time, but I wouldn't stuff the wrappers ahead of time because they will just get too soggy, even though we've just squeezed everything out of here. That is delicious. Oh, that is so fresh. Mm. Oh, that my friends are gonna be so happy. Okay, so we have my filling. Let me get my wrappers out. Now, wonton wrappers, these are the square ones. This is nothing more than fresh uh, Chinese pasta. And it is, you can get them square, you can get them round. You can make round ones too if you want. I like the square ones because you can get more filling into them than the round ones. The round ones just aren't as big. They dry out really quickly. Oh, by the way, where you find them is in the refrigerated section. You also can find them in the freezer and you work with a few at a time. You want roughly a heaping tablespoon per wonton. What I'm using to seal the wrappers is some egg white. It's my glue. So I'm brushing the edges. This is really the most important thing when making ravioli, is making sure they're well sealed. Okay, you put the top wrapper on and you squish it on one side, and then you try to press all the air out. And then you pick it up and be aggressive. Make sure it is so well sealed. Now, if I wasn't gonna cook these right away, I would put plastic wrap and a damp towel on top so they don't dry out. So here we go. If there's a lot of flour in the bottom, just dust it off. Okay. And these take about four or five minutes. And you know what's interesting is usually homemade pasta or fresh pasta doesn't take that long, but this is double thickness. Keep in mind that we've got two wonton wrappers sandwiched together, so it takes a little longer. And how you know when they're done is you take one out and you just cut off an edge, you know, so you don't let the filling out and uh, taste it. Now, if it tastes just perfectly cooked, just al dente, then out it comes. Oh, see this one opened. He's not going in, because that would go all over. And if it does, you know, as Julia Child says, never apologize, never explain that everything's exactly the way it's meant to be, because people are so happy that you're making dinner and they're not. Okay, so let me give it a little stir. And while that's gently cooking, I'm gonna tidy up. Okay. All right, remember that liquid I saved? This goes into this pan. And look at that beautiful color, the ravioli. And I'm not gonna drain them really well because we want some of that cooking liquid. All right, they go right into here. Just to heat up and finish, we're gonna add butter. Oh, what the heck, let me put some butter in right now. We've got two tablespoons. 
and it will melt in the sauce. Okay, well, there's one guy that's sticking to the bottom. Okay, turning it off, and I'm ready to plate. And I've got my friends coming over, so I want to make sure it looks really beautiful. This is a nice thing to make for somebody. It's, you know, how often do you get, I mean, I don't have to tell them I didn't make the pasta. I just bought the wonton wrappers. But how often do you get homemade pasta? I mean, really, you expect to find that in a restaurant. Well, actually, I think three is quite a lot. And I'm going to tip the sauce and put it on. And then down here, that is not all. There's always many layers. We have more of the pecorino and just some chopped toasted walnuts, which finish it off nicely. Another nut that would be great in here would be uh, pistachios or pine nuts. OK, we're good to go. I'm going to go out and see if my friends are here. So ladies, dig in. Thank this you. is a vegetarian dish just for you, Missy. Oh, it's perfect. <laughs> it's bitter greens, an assortment with ricotta and pecorino. You know, I have a secret ingredient here. It's wonton wrappers. That's the pasta. I did not mm. make the pasta. Mm -hmm. I know you'd like to think I've been slaving here, <laughs> but I did not. No, you would never no, know. No. I didn't. Mm. Thank you for joining me. Thanks um, for having us. Let's have a little taste yes. to mm -hmm. lovely gardens. Cheers. Yes. There we go. Mm -hmm. And right. wine. And wine, yes. <laughs> and wonderful ravioli. Rolling Green Hills, hello medieval towns, hello vineyards, hello wine and pasta, hello Tuscany. This region has been calling tourists for thousands of years, and I'm one of them. That's how I found myself at Villa Dianella near the tiny town of Vinci with owner Veronica Duntrave. And what do you do here? Dianella is an estate, it's a boutique winery located in the smallest area of the Chianti, that is in Montalbano, and mostly we produce good olive oil. Olive oil as, as well, too. Yeah, of course. And a wide selection of wines, reds. And including this. Including this. I mean, this is our dessert I wine that is made with Malvasia Lunga del Chianti. Okay. It is a late harvest. Back in Veronica's kitchen in Tuscany, I had a special treat. I'm cooking with local chef Alessio Bagnoli, and he's showing me how to make pasta with an unexpected but totally local ingredient. So Alessio, what kind of pasta are we making today? Now we start preparing pasta with red wine. So Chianti pasta with fresh asparagus and goat cheese. Red wine in the pasta? Red wine in the dough, yes. I have never heard of that before. But of course, we're in Chianti. What do you do? You add wine to everything. We drink wine, we cook with wine, and we make also pasta with wine. So. Why not? Why not? Why so, not? Why, whoa! <laughs> okay, then you're bad. All right, so where do we start? Now we start preparing a sauce, uh, melting butter, and the fresh sage. Oh, that's it for the yes, sauce? That's really that simple. simple? Just two ingredients? Yes. Wow, I mean, do you think that pan's big enough? I hope you are really hungry today, so <laughs> well, we have to make a big plate of pasta. So we start melting the butter, mm -hmm. and then we add the sage to make the infusion to give to the butter the smell of the fresh sage. Oh, wonderful. So we start preparing. So just that, how many leaves is that? Just uh, three or four leaves because uh, the sage uh, have a strong, strong uh, smell, so we don't need too oh, much. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh, but that's great. So do you get it brown or just melt it? No, just melt it because we have not to cover the taste of asparagus. So that's the sauce? That's the sauce, right? Terrific, so, okay. No, we need the pasta. All right, so now let's move on to the pasta. Okay. So we turn that off and park it. Yes, we are ready. Okay. Now you can serve the wine, a little bit for us and a little bit for the pasta. Oh, I like that, <laughs> I like that, okay. Okay. 
So we start with the flower, and what kind of flower is it? Uh, this is semolina, so durum wheat semolina. Durum wheat. Uh, yeah, durum wheat. So it's, it's high gluten content. Yes, because it is uh, uh, the best uh, flour for making pasta. This is a kilo of uh, flour. We use less eggs because we have to uh, use wine for making the dough. I see. So if we weren't adding the wine, we would add um, more eggs. Okay, so go ahead. So Let me can, watch you. So we can start. We can make the volcano. The volcano? Yes. Okay. And we broke inside uh, three eggs. Now we start mixing. You have to do this with your impeccably clean hands. Hands or machine, but with the hands is more fun. Yes. Uh, so you slowly bring in the flour from the outside. Yes. And now we add also the wine. Okay, I can do that. How much? Uh, we have to see. We have to reach the right consistency. So, we can't measure. So say when. Okay. I okay. think we use uh, at least half liter. Half liter, two cups that is. Yes. Uh, okay. We can try to mix. Wow, that's a stunning color. Yes, we don't measure the wine because uh, we have to touch the consistency of the of Okay, the dough, so when so it feels right. I think we need uh, more wine. This is thirsty, yes, thirsty pasta. Yes, this is a th thirsty pasta. But Very thirsty. Now we can move uh, on uh, the marble. Oh, we shoved the whole thing on the marble? Yes, okay. we can move on the marble. And, uh, Do you want me to move the cutting board elsewhere? Okay, we can so move... Uh, to the sink? Yes. I'll take it to the sink. Oh, thank you. Okay. Next time I will be your assistant. Oh, I like that, but I, I also love getting a personal pasta <laughs> lesson. Oh. All right, so you tell me where okay. to put the... Yes, here... Uh, you make another uh, volcano. Yes, another little bit, yes. So you say when. Oh, uh, it's okay. Looks good. Yes. All right, looks make, good. Uh, and then we start, uh, we continue mixing. You can work up quite a sweat doing this, huh? If you are not hungry when you start, you are hungry okay, when you finish. Okay, when you're done. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the dough is ready when you come back with uh, your hands clean. Oh my goodness, look at that. Yes. Before you had all the dough on your yes, hands. Yes, because uh, the dough starts really, really sticky and when uh, you work it, Oh, let me see. That's beautiful. It's ready. Now we've got the gluten is all tight. Yes. So this has to relax for yes. how long? Two hours to three hours at least. Two to three hours. Yes, yes. You okay. store in the refrigerator, cover, uh. and uh, wait three hours. Okay. And take a bit after working. Well, you. <laughs> me too. Whew, that was yes. hard. All right, so we can make the filling while that's resting. Yes. This, yeah. is, this is ready. We put it in the refrigerator and we are ready to prepare. The feeling. We start with cheese. What kind of cheese is it? This is a goat cheese from the Mugello area. This Mugello is a, an area at north of the Tuscany. Okay, so we have the asparagus. And, and how did you prepare it? Okay, we have separated the, the top of the asparagus. But you took off the yeah, bottom Yes, so we took off the bottom because this stuff hard. is this stuff is woody. I have um, cook at halfway. And the, the top, tops, the top the is the garnish. Yes. And, the, and the bottom is goes the, in. Goes inside here with uh, goat cheese and one egg. Any salt and pepper? Uh, just a little bit of pepper because we have enough salt in the goat cheese, so... Do you want me to do the honors? Yes, you can put uh, just a little bit. Okay, is enough. So that's it for the filling? Yes, now we are ready. The dough is rested, so we can start preparing a tortelli. It's tortelli time! Did I tell you I'd never made it before? But well, now you can... Now I'm gonna learn. You, can so know. you do it first and then I'll try to do it like you. So you cut a little piece okay, off. a little piece of dough. Look at how, t how soft it is. Yes, after now all. the gluten is uh, become really, Relaxed. really soft and relaxed. Like, yes, yeah. and now we are ready for making... Uh, so you have a lot more flour on the counter. Yes, we can use now all the flour we need because uh, the flour we use now should, goes should, away should, when we cook just pasta. Should cut another piece like right yes. here? Yes. Okay. Might as well do it with you. When we cook the pasta, all this flour goes away, so... Okay. Mm -hmm. And now we press it with the rolling pin. Now we prepare the layer of pasta, uh -huh. and you see that uh, it's ready when you can see the shape of your hand uh, behind the pasta. I see. Yeah, look okay. at that. Wow. All so right. when you're ready. Okay, let me let me catch up to you. Okay, so you start like this, and then just roll. Yes. 
Now we cut the layer of pasta and uh, we have to make uh, some little square. So you don't, you don't really measure it, you just eyeball it? Uh, yes, uh, 10, 10 centimeters uh, I think is enough. Oh, this yes. is 20, this is more or less. Yeah, two and a half, three no. inches. We don't do centimeters, you know. Uh, if uh, are not... Uh, how's the shape, how's that? I think it's okay. No, you're supposed to say it's great. Uh, when we prepare pasta uh, using the rolling pin, uh, uh, we have uh, to touch when we use the machine, uh, we select It's more it. consistent. Yes. Do you want me to roll it some more? I think it's enough. I think it's okay. Okay, but when you use the machine, it's not made with love. No, this is more, more funny. And uh, with the machine, uh, you can uh, reach every time the same result. Yeah. But uh, okay, I think... Okay, so love or consistency? Uh, I prefer love. Me too. <laughs> okay. We make uh, some little square. Mm -hmm. have uh, some a little square with the stuff inside. We close uh, and seal uh, uh, like a, a little triangle. You make a triangle? Yes, and then we round and we make the tortello. Fantastic. Okay, Good job. great. Now, so you overlap these two. Yes, okay. And then you and flip them up. Press. They come up. Yes. Like that. Yeah, it's like, like a hat. Like a hat. Yes. Okay. Do they don't have to be glued on? Just like that. Fantastic. Good okay. Job. Great. I am going to go down to the cellar and meet Veronica and pick us some wine for dinner. Good idea. I'm going to let you finish all the hard work since <laughs> you started. Okay. Okay. See you soon. Five minutes in boiling water to cook and then manja. Our alfresco meal is a family affair, including Veronica's father, Piero Antonio. Chianti is good with pasta, especially the one made with the Chianti in the dough. So it's a food-friendly wine. Exactly. Well, of course. I mean, it's Italian. Yeah. Oh, there he is. Oh, look at that. Oh, that is so beautiful. Wow. The result of our hard job. Veronica, I give you the tortelli made by Sara. Oh so. dear, oh dear. <laughs> oh, so my no, tortelli! Be... I was learning, so I'm not sure they were all squished together appropriately. <laughs> okay, one is served in all. You did I... a great job, Sara. Well, it was fun. Yes. They oh. maybe. Mmm. They're delicious. They maybe learn to eat vegetable. I'm getting the wine and the pasta. That's so cool. Yes, you can. Uh, you can uh, taste uh, it. Taste the. Mm. Uh, the smell and the mm. taste of the wine, but also wine. the consistency of the, oh. of the pasta changes. Mm. Perfecto. Perfecto. Mm -hmm. Alessio. Alessio, you did a great job. And Sarah. Yes. Well, I'm just a newbie. What can I tell you? Yes. Um, this is just the best thing I've eaten since I've been in Italy and perhaps the best tortelli ever. Ever? Yes, ever. Yes, because you, you, you. Uh, yes. Mm, I love the filling. It's so simple. So simple, but so tasty. If you have fresh ingredients, very good olive oil, very good wine, very good chef. Oh, an <laughs> excellent chef. Garanty. Yes, but today we have also a good assistant. <laughs> Just saying. Just, Just saying. saying. Yes. <laughs> I have a toast. It's to great chefs, and wonderful assistance. Okay. Extraordinary. And what do we say? What do we say? We say, with a great wine, and we say, Sante! 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 Yes, yes, yes! We're gonna chug along. There we go. Hmm. To be honest, I'll leave making this truly outstanding pasta to the Italians. But after sitting outside, sipping wine at a beautiful villa with new friends, well, every time I make my weeknight version, I'll close my eyes and dream I'm back here. 
I'm Sarah Moulton. Thanks for joining me on Sarah's Weeknight Meals.